everybody. I want to bring you in on a project that I'm working on and explain to you how you use a construction level to find the contour for creating a swale. So the project I'm working on, my driveway, the, the right of way, the main road is to my left. My driveway is where the camera is sitting and comes up the hill to my right. And I want to place a few swales along this embankment just for perennial flowers. Just above, the, at the top of this embankment is where my beehive is. And I want to create a nice visual entrance coming into the property with some perennial growing flowers that my bees can harvest from. To do that, to find these contours, I'm going to use this construction level. Now this specific level is by a company called AGL. It's their 3000S model if you want to look that up. And I'll put a link down in the description below. This construction level is extremely accurate. Uh, it's a made in America, and I can't quote you all the specs, but suffice to say I chose to invest in this model because of its accuracy and its distance capability. So, how does it really work? This can get so easy that people see complication in it where it doesn't actually exist. The laser level, this piece here, sits on top of a tripod. This tripod just needs to be in visual range, both line of sight and elevation wise, of wherever you are working. Now this tripod extends pretty darn tall, so if I wanted to do a couple contours on this embankment, I can leave this right where it is and simply raise it however many feet that I want. Where most people get confused is the actual finding the spot of the contour on the ground. You see this peg I've already set in the ground? I'm using this as a benchmark. This is my origin point. This is where I know I want the swale to exist, and then I want to find all the level points that match this. So here's what we have to do. We have to turn on the laser level, turn on the receiving device, take a measurement here, and then everywhere else we go, we know that we're finding the exact same elevation or height as this peg. Now this in my hand here is called a grade rod. And you can see it's got numbers up and down it, but it is, the numbers are unimportant for this instance. We could just as well take this receiving device off and put it onto a stick. We don't have to have a fancy grade rod to do this. The grade rod gives us the capability of doing other things, uh, but for now, uh, we don't have to have it. Since I do, I'm going to use it. So let's find the contour for this. Your laser level, if I were to recommend anything to you, should be self-leveling. It's going to make your life easier in the future. This is self-leveling, but in order for the machine to level itself, its base has to be within a certain margin of error. Now, you need to look up the specs on whichever one you have. It could be anywhere from 3 degrees to 7 degrees or, or perhaps anywhere outside of that range as well. So all I'm going to do is turn on my laser level and the laser head inside the machine will start to balance itself out and I will know that it is level when the laser head starts to spin. While that's turning on, I will turn on the receiver. Now this receiver has two different windows. It has one in the front as well as one in the back. And I'll just point out, in case you can't see it, the laser is now spinning, uh, so I know it's already found level. So now what we need to do is find out where the laser is actually transmitting and adjust this to the laser. So, for example, listen for a beep. You hear that? See, I had to come up with the receiver just a little bit to find the laser. It's shooting around here. Well, that beep means that it is hit somewhere within this reception field. So there it is. Now let's head back over to our peg. Now I'm going to loosen the receiver on the guide and just try to find... There's the beep. Now... I'm going to slowly adjust. Let me take it back out so you can hear it again. Now on the back of the display, and even here on the front, there are some 
pyramids. Uh, they look like pyramids. They're arrows. One to let you know whether you need to adjust down or one if you need to adjust up. And when you find perfect center, you get that green flashing light and a bar going across. So right now we have found our benchmark. Now, with this set, if I make no adjustments to the location of my transmitter or how my receiver is mounted to this guide rod, everywhere that I find that mark is going to be center. They're going to be on contour, excuse me. So see, right now it's telling me I need to come up a little bit. So I just come up the hill a little, down the hill a little, and there we are. There's my point. Now, I'm just using these little plastic uh, tent stakes to mark my location. You could do this in a bunch of different ways. You can use uh, marking spray paint. You can use wooden sticks. You could have somebody following you along with a shovel and just making a little dent in the, uh, taking up a little divot and marking out wherever you happen to find the contour. There we are. Now, if you're not familiar with it, why are we doing this? Why are we worried about contour? Well, if we dig out a level ditch, a level swale, dig a ditch, and then on the downhill side, pile up that dirt into a berm, then we can capture a level of water that can soak into the berm that we create and plant our flowers into that and make sure that they stay hydrated. So, I'm going to finish off this project. I hope you guys learned something from this. I hope you can realize that whether you're using an A-frame, a water level, or a fancy little laser level like this, finding a contour is important and easy. So I encourage you to take the time to do it. And I hope that if you do get into the uh, expensive equipment that you don't let it intimidate you. There's a lot more that this equipment can accomplish, but finding a simple contour is easy and doesn't have to be complicated. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you next time.